I probably spend an unhealthy amount of time speculating about Tesla's next vehicle that they've basically confirmed the existence of, but have not unveiled the design to the world. It was originally brought up at Battery Day saying that with these 4680 cells, we'll be able to make a compelling electric vehicle at $25,000 that will be using the lithium iron phosphate battery chemistry and, as they later tagged along with those iron phosphate cells, probably a range close to that of 300 miles. So it might not be exactly 300, but Tesla, I think, does a lot of sandbagging, so I wouldn't be surprised if it ends up exceeding that. But literally every day, I think about how exactly they're going to do this, and they'll probably do it differently for different markets. I mean, Elon has confirmed that for the European market, Giga Berlin is going to be designing a smaller compact hatchback to fit that market better, but no word on that ever coming to the United States or China. And they've also confirmed the existence long ago in Giga Shanghai that they would be developing a vehicle by locals in that area that would probably suit that market better, which a lot of people are theorizing to be some type of compact hatchback as well. But the 25K one they referenced is not an exclusive to a certain country. And as the title in thumbnail is suggesting, I think there are a lot of benefits for Tesla to kind of go the cyber route and make a vehicle that is controversial, that splits people down the middle and basically gets memed to death, similar to how the Cybertruck did. My hope here is that Tesla has seen how viable viral and how successful the Cybertruck can be, and now wants to bring a lot of its manufacturing techniques and benefits to a more everyday consumer car, a cyber car, if you will. And I'm not just saying cyber car because I think it would be neat if, you know, we had weirder looking cars on the road. It's because functionally there's a ton of benefits by going with that low polygon, very flat, very straight edge design that also allows you to skip the painting process. I'm basically looking at it as, okay, if the Cybertruck starts at $39,900. Sure, the official version might be more expensive than that, so let's just say the Cybertruck, with all of its great stock features, the vault, the huge bed, six-seat interior, the armored glass, adaptive air suspension, the built-in air compressor, the tailgate that folds into a ramp. It has all of these great perks, and they're able to charge $40,000 for it, plus even that giant vehicle is able to go over 250 miles on a single charge. Now, what could you do with a lot of the Cybertruck's cost-saving measures on a smaller, less fancy vehicle that doesn't have the same practicality or functionality of a pickup truck, but can still seat five adults, can still have some trunk space or make it a hatchback, but you can also default with the coil suspension instead of air suspension, and you don't need a built-in air compressor that people can tap into, and you don't need as big a battery because the vehicle wouldn't be as large. If you're able to address all of these cost-saving measures with the Cybertruck, how could you address a sedan with that same style? This is what helps me believe a $25,000 Tesla is possible because with currently how the lineup stands, 25 k is quite a jump down considering the cheapest Tesla they sell on their website is $38,000. And yes, I do believe all of the cost-saving measures of the 4680 cells. I believe the range will be good and making the battery pack structural and increasing the energy density of these batteries is going to make a lot of this 25 k Tesla possible. But the key reason I would love to see Tesla move more towards the cyber aesthetic for this super affordable vehicle is for one, it can stand on its own right, it can stand separate from the Model 3 and not cannibalize it. One of my main questions and concerns for Tesla making just a normal four-door compact sedan that shares a lot of design similarities with the Model 3, it just happens to be a little bit smaller. I just feel like for $10,000 or $13,000 less than a Model 3, everyone would end up just buying that and then what would be the purpose of the Model 3 in the lineup, right? It would be a little bit redundant at that point to just have another vehicle that kind of blends in with the whole sexy lineup of practical and fast sporty sedans. Some of them have hatchbacks and the cheaper ones don't and we just continue to add to that lineup with a slightly cheaper option. The reason I'm less excited about that is because I'm sure in time as either Tesla starts selling their batteries to other companies or other companies like LG and Panasonic are watching Battery Day and going, holy crap, this is a good idea, we should start doing that too they're going to start developing their own 4680 cells and using the same tactics as Tesla and more traditional brands that are more established and less risk-taking. They're going to develop compact hatchbacks that are electric and probably use the iron phosphate chemistry. And I think in the next few years, there's going to be tons of compact hatchback electric vehicles that all just kind of blend together in terms of design of, yeah, okay, it's a little small, but you get good range and the price isn't that bad. And I don't want to see Tesla just continue to fall into the same trends as if 
everybody else. I want them to challenge our beliefs on what a vehicle should be capable of. And the great thing that I appreciate so much about the Cybertruck, even if you don't like the design, is that the great specifications it offers pushes the rest of the industry to try to be a lot more competitive. Because regardless of whether or not you like the design, when you look at the Rivian R1T and think, okay, it can go over 300 miles and it's going to cost me around 70 grand, that's a harder sell when you know there's a larger vehicle with a larger bed, more durability benefits, and a longer range for way cheaper. That makes you feel like the Rivian isn't as good a deal. That makes you feel like, well, okay, cost per dollar, it's not as good as a Cybertruck. And because of those features and range and price being the most important things to electric vehicle buyers, that makes the Cybertruck look really, really compelling. And it just comes down to whether or not you're willing to spend an extra 20 grand on a beauty tax to a certain extent. You're spending a bunch of money to make sure the car looks the way you want it to, which is fine. Design plays a major role in what vehicle people end up buying, but you want to have lots of variety in the electric vehicle market. You don't want a bunch of vehicles kind of all doing the same thing with similar ranges. What's good is to have a bizarre design, something that stands out, something that's very DeLorean-esque and something that wouldn't be instantly likable to the average consumer, but does have groundbreaking specifications that no one else is capable of beating just because you don't have a paint shop to worry about, you don't have a stamping press to worry about because it's a stainless steel exoskeleton and as Sandy Monroe talks about with mass production of the Cybertruck, it's going to be a piece of cake. It's going to be way, way easier to mass produce because of how simple and how little complications there are to the design. Bringing that to a smaller vehicle and allowing you to bypass those expensive processes and manufacturing means that you could provide a range way better than the rest of the competition at a price way lower than the rest of the competition. Essentially what Tesla has done with the Cybertruck, I want them to do with a four-door sedan. And sure, I know a lot of people probably won't like it. A lot of people would look at it and say, yeah, I'm not into the look of that. I want something more traditional or I want something more slim and sexy like a Model 3 or a VW ID3 or a Polestar 2 and all those different options that are a bit more traditional in terms of design. But at least all of those consumers comparing their options would say, well, where's my money going when I buy a Model 3 or a Polestar 2? A lot of that money is going towards just the aesthetics and how I want the car to look. Some people might prefer that and that's fine, but we also want there to be an option out there for people to say, hey, if I'm willing to put up with stainless steel and not having paint and I'm willing to put up with a bit of a non-conventional design, I can get so much better range and I could save so much money that way. I feel like a cyber car would not butcher the Model 3 sales very much because it wouldn't be for everyone, but the price would be so tempting that a lot of people would just put up with it and eventually fall in love with it just like they did with the Cybertruck and kind of have a design that's a bit more timeless, something that doesn't age as much, and something that feels a bit more unique and iconic than what the rest of the industry is doing. So going all in on specs to set yourself aside from the competition, in my opinion, is a great way to go. I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts on a cyber sedan, whether or not you think it's a great or terrible idea, and think about the market as a whole. Don't think of it just as whether or not you would buy it or not. Just think about what it could do for competition if they knew that that cyber car is beating them on price and range every day in the week, and that makes their options just feel like you're paying extra for beauty. All that good stuff, feel free to let me know. Thank you all for watching. Hope you have an excellent rest of your day. Take care.